the very purpose of sampling is to save the energy and time needed for a research. The sampling is conducted uh, with the purpose to collect the data from a few people who are representative of the population and then draw the generalizations and conclusions that are applicable for the whole population. An attempt is made to decide the exact uh, people in the sample and to collect the data from them and draw the conclusions. But at times there are some mistakes made at the sampling level and that is why one cannot generalize the findings. In this section we will be discussing about which are those possible mistakes in the sampling. Some of them could be avoided while some of them are the part of the that particular sampling method. So we cannot avoid them. So let us see which of them could be avoided. The researcher must attempt to make as less number of mistakes in the sampling as possible. So we will be discussing some of them. As we have said that uh, in the sampling human being is the weakest instrument for selecting a sample. One has one's own likings, prejudices, biases towards the people around, maybe the institutions around and thus the selection goes very in a wrong manner. So this kind of sampling bias whenever researchers or own intervention comes into picture or the sampling is made on the basis of researchers own selection such uh, type of modalities, such type of procedures bringing the sampling bias. So sampling bias is a distortion in the representativeness of the sample that arise when some members of the population stand little or no chance of being selected for inclusion in the sample. Now as in the definition it is said that some member of the populations may not have the equal opportunity for getting selected in the sample. Now this will happen in case of all the kinds of non-probability sampling methods where the selection is not based on the randomness but it is based on maybe at times uh, researchers convenience, at times the researchers own uh, some purpose for selecting some uh, members while to avoid some other members at times maybe the uh, due to uh, situations. Whichever the source may be but such kind of uh, modalities they do add the sampling bias and thus the sample that is resultant is not the actual representative of the population and hence they bring in the challenges and limitations towards the generalization towards the uh, population. We go to the next sampling uh, challenge or mistake in the sampling. There are multiple sources for the sampling biases. The first source could be the use of non-probability sampling methods. In use of non-probability sampling methods, the judgment of who should be the part of uh, the sample is based on the some other factor but not the randomness. And hence whenever the non-probability sampling methods are used, there will be definitely some sampling bias will come. So the bias may be at times due to the researcher, at times due to the situations or at times maybe the participants interest and will to participate or not. So because of all uh, such factors sampling bias comes into picture. The other source for sampling bias could be inadequate sampling frame. We have seen in the definition of sampling frame that one needs the complete list of the members in the sample, I mean the sampling frame, the population from which the sample is to be selected. Now imagine a situation where one has to select say 7 students from a class of 50. But if the list of all the 50 students and their information is not available, say uh, the information of only 40 students is available. 
So, those 10 whose information is not available, they are already, they have lost the chance to get selected in the sample. So, does this uh, sampling frame, if it is incomplete, if it is inadequate, then it gives rise to the sampling bias. At times, it happens that the probability sampling method is used, every member in the uh, population is given enough and equal opportunity to be a part of the sample. So, the randomness is followed to the 100 point. The sample is selected taking all the possible measures, but at times the person who is selected in the sample may say that I do not want to be the part of this study, I do not want to give my opinion. In such cases, those people who are, who have been selected as a sample, but they refuse to be the, uh, the part of the sample, they automatically get deleted from the actual data generating sample. And in this case, since the, the people who have been selected through randomness and still they do not become the part of the sample gives addition to the uh, sampling bias because they are removed, so naturally the resulting sample does not anymore remain the miniature of the population and that is why one cannot generalize for the whole population. So, these were some of the sources for the sampling bias. One has to try to avoid them as many as possible, but as you can see there are certain situations where one cannot avoid them and has to go ahead with them. The researcher is aware of such kind of sampling biases involved and their impact on the generalizations for the study. The next kind of mistake is the sampling error. Now, this once again come from the source where the sample is not the representative of the population where the sample is having some different characteristics than the population or, or maybe the all the characteristics of the population are not exactly taken care of while sample is selected. Thus, all the characteristics do not appear in the sample and it no more remains the miniature of the population. So, uh, in when such kind of an error occurs, it is called as the sampling error. It is defined as the error in the findings deriving from the difference between the sample and the population from which it is selected. If the sample selected is not having all those characteristics of the population and still the data is processed further analyzed and the findings are derived out of the study. If such findings are considered as the generalized finding for the population, they are definitely with the sampling error in them. So, they cannot be really taken as authentic findings from the study. We uh, spoke about the sampling error. Similarly, there is another terminology called as non-sampling error. Non-sampling error occurs due to following the sampling method which is not most appropriate for that population or for that study. For example, if the population consists of many subgroups, so it is expected that the stratified random sampling is the most suitable method for sample selection. This will give the opportunity for every smaller group of the population to have its representative in the final sample. But if the sample uh, is selected without taking care that there is representation for from every minor group of the population and then the findings are generalized and findings are derived and generalized, then it uh, calls for non-sampling error because there are certain members of the population who should have been in the uh, sample but due to the wrongly used sampling method, they are not the part of the sample. The various sources for non-sampling error are again inadequate sampling frame where the list of the all the members of the population is not available 
and that's why they cannot be the part of the uh, sample. At times, persons in the sample, they do not respond to the questionnaire. They do not respond to the your attempt to collect data from them and that's why the non-sampling error gets added into the research. There may be some reasons for such non-response from the uh, persons who have been selected as a sample. At times the wording may be in the questionnaire or in the rating scale is not clear to the person. In that case the person cannot answer in exact manner the way it is expected by the researcher and the, that's why the sampling uh, is faulty. At times especially when the techniques are used for uh, data collection, uh, a technique like say interviewing and if the person who is conducting the interview is not competent enough to collect the data to the minutest level. In such case even if there is data it is not getting collected and, and thus the improper use or inadequate use of the technique calls for the non-sampling error. It existed the person gave the data but it was not in the capacity of the interviewer to collect the data from person who is being interviewed. He expressed something but this person could not catch that uh, detail and that is why the data is lost. At times there is flawed processing of the data. The data is gathered but it is processed in the wrong manner. So one reaches with some wrong conclusions and generalizations. Thus there are many such sources for the non-sampling errors in the sampling. The non-response type of mistake happens when the person selected as a part of the sample refuses to respond. So though every care is taken for following the probability sampling method, the person selected does not want to respond to the questionnaire or does not want to share his or her opinions about the question under study. The reasons may be many at times the person is not contactable. So the researcher makes lot of attempts for contacting the person maybe phoning multiple times or sending emails or maybe trying to meet the person but the person is just not available and in thus, uh, such case the data from that person gets missed out. The other reasons could be the person who from whom the data is to be collected that person is not in a position to give the data. Now this may be due to the uh, at times may be due to the reasons of confidentiality or maybe the data is uh, may not be readily available with that person and the person is not ready to spend that kind of time to gather the data and give it to the researcher. At times or it also happens that the person is not competent enough to give the data to the researcher at times they he or she does not have the authority to share that data. So there are such uh, reasons because of which the non-response aspect comes into picture. Though there could be multiple uh, reasons for the non-response, the researcher must make an attempt to contact the persons in the sample time and again. This is essential because the uh, if the such person is a part of the sample only then the sample will be a true representation of the population and that is something which the researcher definitely can do something about and uh, thus the findings could be generalized for the whole population. Thus we saw uh, some of the mistakes that could happen in the sampling process. If the researcher wants that the findings from his study should be generalized for the larger population, utmost care has to be taken to minimize any of these mistakes. There would be some of the mistakes which will be uh, there as a part of the sampling procedure or sampling method chosen. But there are certain parts where 
uh, researcher definitely can avoid such mistakes uh, and a researcher should ma make every attempt to avoid such mistakes. Only if the sample is too representative of the population, only then the generalizations could be possible and uh, authentic. So, it is very much essential that the researcher uh, is well aware of such sampling mistakes and should avoid them while conducting the research.